Today we're going to talk about drag radial suspension. What is needed to make a small drag radial work properly. When we first switched to drag radials, it was a learning curve. Back then, 10 years ago, 12 years ago, um, and even before, there was not much adjustability in the control arms. So factory locations were all you had. There was not much change you could do. The people that have been doing it for a while remember south side lower control arms they were one of the first companies that i ever seen that relocated the lower control arm and it was really a good idea they were way ahead of their time by simply lowering the control arm mounting location you were able to change the instant center length and height and ultimately change the anti-squat generally an instant center that is short and high will give you more anti-squat and plant the radial harder and that is exactly what you want to do everybody has different opinions on how to properly set up a drag radial car in my opinion i like to have anti-squat values of 150 percent or higher so somewhere in the 175 range is optimal from what I've seen on my car. This is an instant center calculator. Simply input your measurements and the calculator does all the work. It will tell you the exact location of your instant center and what your height, length, and anti-squat numbers are. It is also important to note that the center of gravity is not 100% accurate. It is a guess. So your numbers could be off a little, but that's not a problem. This information will allow you to make educated changes in the future. The red line in this graph is the neutral line or anti-squat line. Instant center locations above this line result in values above 100 percent if the instant center location is below this red line the instant center value will be less than 100 percent if the value is 100 percent the car neither squats nor rises if the value is over 100 percent the rear end will separate from the body as you can tell from the graph, it is possible to have a different instant center height and length, but still have the same anti-squat value. The anti-squat value is always determined by the distance that it is away from the neutral line. Here we have a ladder bar set up. In this scenario, you can see the lower bar and the upper bar connect to one point on the body. This is the instant center location. The instant center length can never be changed, only the height and anti-squat value. Usually there are three adjustment points on the body for a ladder bar. The upper hole should give a positive anti-squat value of over 100%, and the lower hole should be less than 100%. So this means you have to have a great shock to control that separation. So to get the instant center in the right location to where the length, the height, and the anti-squat numbers are exactly what you want it to be, you have to have adjustability. That means the lower control arms and the upper control arms both will move. You have now created a four link suspension that is fully adjustable, giving you the ability to adjust instant center length, height, and anti-squat. Another way you can manipulate instant center height and length and anti-squat is by adjusting the ride height but the preferred method is moving the bars. You gotta move the bars. So on my car that I have here, I've got an 8.8 .8 rear end, 
I have adjustable brackets on the bottom. The upper control arm mount on the rear end is in the stock location. It has spherical uh, bushings. On the body of the car, there is lots of adjustability on the upper control arm. And on the lower control arm on the body, I have one hole one inch down from the factory location. So not much adjustability there. And here we have a picture of my car. And you can see the brackets. There's many holes for adjustability. This is good. The more holes, the more precisely you can adjust your instant center. So this is an example of lower control arm bar angle. It rises from the rear to the front. It's hard to see in this video, but it rises about one inch. Generally, the lower bar needs to have a slight uphill rake. And here you can see the upper control arm is pointed downhill from the rear end. This is a picture of the upper control arm mount. Again, you can see lots of holes for lots of adjustability. To find your instant center location, you must continue the angle of the bars and draw an imaginary line from the upper bar and the lower bar out into space. The point where those two angles intersect is your instant center location. Once you find your instant center location, it is imperative to make a pass and review the data and make changes based on your data, not by the sheer numbers that the instant center calculator tells you. The general rule of thumb is the lower control arm, three to five degrees uphill, and the upper control arm, 10 to 15 degrees downhill. Each car will vary. Every car is also different. So what works on one car may not work on another. Use your data and your data only. Key to getting the drag radial to work, a good shock in the back, and a lot of anti-squat in most cases. There are some great instant center calculators out there. Go on Google and type in general instant center calculator. Measure precisely the height from the floor. So you want to be on a flat concrete surface when you're entering the measurements. Baseline Suspensions probably has one of the best calculators out there. And they have a lot of cool suspension products as well. So make sure you go check out their website. There are a few cars out there that go against that general rule of thumb that you want to have a very high anti-squat value. And those cars squat. And you can tell it. And you can tell the difference between which, which philosophy the racer is going with, either a high anti-squat or low anti-squat. It's definitely easy to see when you're at the track. There's always more than one way to do it. But if the car squats, it takes a drastically different setting for your shocks and your tire pressures. So whoever is helping you tune your car, take all their advice, not some of their advice. The goal is to have the front end separate the same time as the rear end. So it's basically coming up all together. The front and the rear are rising together. Always trust what the video is telling you and what the data is showing. The more information you have, the better chance you have at making the car work in all conditions. But drag radials are definitely fun. They're exciting. They're very stable down track. So that's why I love them over a slick. Um, slicks are just very difficult to drive, especially when you've been on radials for a long time. Don't be afraid to move the bars. Don't be afraid to adjust air pressure. Look at the video. And when you're in the car, if you experience some tire shake, it can get pretty violent. The tire shake can be rough. 
Um, if it breaks a window or opens a door, you know that you got to change something. Something's got to change. All right, don't forget to like and share this. Uh, or make some comments in the in the bottom. Uh, you know, if you got any questions, I can give you my opinion on on how to help uh, make a small tire drag radio car work. Thanks for watching.